Hey, everybody, and welcome to episode number 238 of the Chris Rose Rotation, a production of John Boy Media, and time to catch up with one of our good friends around here, Miguel Rojas, the shortstop slash second baseman slash everything slash coach on the field of the Los Angeles Dodgers. <laughs> Hello, Miggy Rowe. What up, Rosie? How you doing, man? Uh, I'm good. It's been it's been a long time since uh, since I haven't been uh, the starting shortstop, but uh, I mean it feels good to be uh, to be able to bounce back and forward, different positions. Make me feel young again. You know, that's one of the uh-huh. things that uh, that uh, that I'm getting from from all this moving, playing second base, playing third. Um, uh, finding a little bit more of regularity now at second base uh, when I when I start against lefties. Um, it makes it makes me feel like a young Miggy Rowe. Yeah. You know what? Let's start there since we're here. I can't tell you the number of times on the Dodgers broadcast they show you and Mookie Betts in your pregame work where you're essentially coaching him through all these things that he's going to be seeing on a daily basis as the everyday shortstop now. How long do you guys spend doing this and what are you telling him? Uh, first off, I'm, I'm not I'm not coaching Mookie. Uh, I'm being an accent for him. I feel like that's that's a, the best way to describe it. Is uh, I mean, with all the experience that I have in the position, I played in the in the in the highest level. Uh, I played every single day. I kind of know what to expect from you know from going to one stadium to the other to play in a uh, in um, natural grass, going to uh, artificial grass, and and. Being able to do it in the infield for so long got me the experience so I can share with him anytime he have a question. So I feel like other than, than me trying to coach Mook, it's been like a, a relationship where he used me as, as someone that has done it before and has done it for a long time in the big leagues and played his whole life as a shortstop compares to him just playing when he was growing up and uh, he came up as a middle infielder. But at the end of the day, he's been playing in the outfield for so long. So we've been just talking about like things that he feels like it's been challenging for him and and other stuff that, that he needs to kind of clarify on his head so he can be the best player that he can be. So I feel like our communication and our, our, our relationship is been making me work extremely hard, which is something that I like, you know, the work ethic that Mookie uh, bring every single day to a ballpark and um, the way that he works every single day to get better kind of is infectious to me because I'm working really hard and that keeps me sharp when I have my opportunity to play. So, yeah, it feels like and it seems like I'm coaching him and I'm trying to tell him what to do, but it's not like that. He's, he's being Mookie. He's being himself. He's just asking me some questions about like different plays that I, I had the opportunity to experience before. And, I mean, we had a really good relationship, man. It's great. It's awesome to watch. And the Dodger broadcasters are certainly talking you up, saying what a great teammate you are. But we've, we've known all that for years and years. I am curious, what is what has been the biggest challenge for him that he's told you? The throwing. The throwing part has been kind of the, 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 the biggest challenge for him because uh, he's coming from the outfield where playing right field, you have to have the best arm. In, in the whole team, you know, like, and he does, he does have a great arm, but sometimes he gets you, he, he's used to have a, like a little longer arm, you know, like you don't really care about like what kind of speed you have to throw this ball, what distance, the distance is always kind of going to be a long distance. It's going to be 120 foot or, or longer throw in the outfield, in the infield. It's not, you know, like sometimes you can throw the ball from 45 feet. Sometimes you have to throw the ball from 120 feet. Sometimes you get a, a routine ground ball and have to throw it for 80 feet. So you need to kind of like have different speeds when you're playing in the infield, you know, especially when you're playing short. You have no time to kind of set your feet sometimes. You have to catch a ball and throw it. And we've been working on a lot of that. So with that being said, I know I'm not a coach yet, but I'm taking this experience as my first kind of opportunity to get to know how to coach, you know. For me... I kind of know what kind of stage I am in my career. I know the the end of my career is going to come sooner than when I started my year, my 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 career with the with the Dodgers. So, I'm starting to kind of get to know how to how to coach a teammate right now, but I know I'm preparing myself for my next steps, you know? I want to be a coach. I want to stay on the field, and I don't want to like 
retire from baseball and go home and spend a couple of years away from baseball. No, I want to stay in the game. So I don't know when that day is going to be, but I feel like this opportunity and this chance not to play every day and having the opportunity to help others. It's not just Mookie. I'm, I'm, I'm involved with, Mon- with Monsi at third base. I'm involved with uh, Gavin Lux at second base. He's been doing amazing uh, at second. That's why you kind of like lay back and just lay, let him do his thing until he have some questions or he have some kind of, you know, like problems or, or if he struggles at some point. Um, but he's doing really good. But I've I been like, like paying really close attention to my teammates so that way I can actually start my, my process of like a player that wants to be a coach but I don't want to wait till that time for me to start coaching. Do you think that when the year's done that you'll ask those guys how you can become a better coach? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I, I, and I'm, I'm having those conversations already. Um, like I asked Mookie what, what is he wants for him, for his work to be like, you know? And I prepare a plan, you know, in the mornings and I kind of think about like things that helped me in the past when I was like trying to overcome some fears um, when I wake up and not knowing how this field is going to play because it's faster and it got a shorter grass. So I prepare kind of plan in the morning so I can go. We have a, a window that we do for defense every single day. And in that window, we always do our routine. So we do it we, we do it separately because obviously his routine is different than mine. So we do our knees routines, our white base, whatever it is. And then after that, we always have like a fundamental infield drill for the day. And that's kind of related to what the problems have are been the last couple of games. Let's say the last game, Mookie kind of he he couldn't catch a ball on the on the forehand. And I was playing second base and I was like really close. I have I have like literally the best seat in the house to watch the play develop. And I saw why he missed the ball. So now today when we got the field for half an hour, we want to work on something related to that. You know, like I bring a, maybe a drill or something that helped me in the past and I present it to him. If he likes it, he's going to do it. If he don't like it, he will go get back to me and say, oh, I feel like I need to do it this way because that's the way that I feel it, it get me better, and that way I can learn how to how to coach a young player too. Because uh, to me, it's a young player playing shortstop because it's the first year he's done it. You know, so that's the same kind of thing when you gotta gotta coach a guy that is 22 years old, um, getting to United States from Latin America. So hopefully, I can learn something from this experience that helps me in my coaching career. This is so awesome. So give me a for instance today. It's the start of a weekend series in San Diego at Petco Park. Yeah. You've played in that stadium forever, for years and years and years. You know it back and forth. Now Mookie gets a shot at it. I don't know how many games he started down there at shortstop or if he has at all. You guys will go out there for, what, a half hour today and walk through it and make sure that he understands everything about it so he's ready for the weekend? Yeah, and that's exactly what we do. So uh, 30 minutes today. Uh, we have the field from 2 to 2.30. So we get there, we do our routine, and then we go to the shortstop spot. I told him, like, I, I, I tried to tell him about, like, the grass, how the field plays there, you know. Like, it's, it's pretty fast because uh, when, when you move to the West and you're coming from, like, I mean, in L.A., it's kind of fast too. So it's not a big adjustment. But the, the biggest challenge is when you have to go from, like, the east or the middle uh, mm. or, or the central in 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 the in the national league because the, the grass is thicker, is higher, the fields are slower. When you come to the west, the fields are faster, and this one is one of the fastest one because uh, the grass in the infield is like a potting green. So mm. I feel like you have to get used to that. So you have to get some ground balls, you have to get some reads, and then after that, we want to work on on the forehand, trying to keep the glove open every single time that you run into the ball. Because that's another thing that you do in the, in the outfield. In the outfield, you're running for a ball and you're running with your glove close. Because you you have to try to get some distance. You're not going to be running with your glove open like that, you know. But in the infield, you have to have your glove open because it's, the distance are shorter, you know. Like the ball is going to get to you faster. So if you have your glove open at all times, it's easier for you to catch a ball because all you have to do is like stop it with the glove. 
So that's those are the kind of things that we're going to uh, work on today. And uh, so I'm, I'm giving you a breakdown right now. I mean, this is great. Miggy, if I had had you as my infield coach when I was eight, I wouldn't have quit by the time I was nine. I'm just going <laughs> to tell you. Well, that's gonna be that's gonna be my my goal. My goal is gonna be to make uh to make kids better. And after I I'm 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 finished this year with with Mookie. Hopefully, I make him a or or we make him as a as a as a whole a go Glover. I'm gonna start with my son. So hopefully, nice. Hopefully, Aaron can be a a really good middle infielder too. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna bet on that. I, I bet you he's <laughs> gonna be all right. By the way, uh, you should tell Mookie that you take Venmo. You know, if he wants to ever pay you or just leave you a little tip, because I don't know if you know this, he signed for three hundred sixty-five million a few years ago. I know. So just saying, I know. you can buy you a lot of Jordans, brother. Oh, all I all I want is uh, to have a ring at the end. Ah. So that's gonna be the the most uh, 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 gratifying thing that I can get from all the work that we're putting right now. Okay, good. Pardon the interruption, but oh my goodness, it's the bottom of the ninth. Two outs, bases full, down three, the crowd's on their feet, the drama of baseball is real, and so is all the action at DraftKings Sportsbook. From the first pitch to the final out, DraftKings has you covered with same-game parlays, live betting, odds boosts, and so much more. And if you're new to DraftKings, you got to check this out. New customers bet just 5 bucks and get $150 in bonus bets instantly. So download DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use promo code ROSE and new customers can bet just 5 bucks and get $150 in bonus bets instantly. That's code ROSE only at the DraftKings Sportsbook. The crown is yours. Uh, I'm curious. So you are in San Diego and obviously, you know, you've played there a bunch. Do you get up and walk around the city at all? Do you like to do that or you just chill in your hotel until you, you go to the stadium? No, actually, for for people who knows me a little bit, I feel they, they know that San Diego is my favorite, my favorite city in all the United States. Um, I think I really enjoy the weather here. It's really nice. Uh, I mean, blue skies, perfect temperatures almost all year round. And yeah, I like I like to walk around uh, the city and... Uh, um, I, I get a rental car yesterday and I drove uh, from uh, L.A. to San Diego because we, we're going to San Francisco after this series. So um, I'm going to have a rental car and then I'm trying to uh, visit different places, go eat uh, by the water uh, in La Jolla. Um, I do stuff like that. You know, I like I, when I'm on the road and I'm, I'm by myself, I like to kind of like go, go to some places, uh, enjoy the weather a little bit. And then I go to the ballpark so I get my my head uh, away from the from the game, sorry. Okay, that's good. You're not going shoe shopping on this trip. Are you probably doing it in San Francisco, aren't you? Uh, yeah, I'm probably I'm probably waiting until San Francisco. Here in San Diego, yeah, I know there's a couple malls, but there's other things to do here, you know? Like you yeah. go um, have a nice um, uh, tacos here at Unbelievable. I uh, always like to go for like a, a Mexican, Mexican kind of breakfast style, you know? Like a breakfast burrito or something like that by the ballpark. Um, there's a couple of good uh, good restaurants around the ballpark in downtown San Diego, um, but yeah, that's what I do. I look for a coffee uh, local coffee shop that uh, that I like. But right now we're staying like kind of far away, so that's why the mm-hmm. rental car make a little bit more sense. So I'll go over there. Okay, got it. You'll still take the bus down though. No, no, no. I'm I'm having a rental car for the whole weekend, so I I just drive. You're to- driving to the stadium in a in a rental car? Yeah. That's what I do. Well, so what do you have to go find a lot and flip them twenty bucks? I park here. <laughs> no, we uh, we have a we have a like a special players lot because uh, I mean, coming from LA, a lot of a lot of players kind of drive and drive yeah. with the families here. So we kind of have like a lot that, that we park uh. close to the close to the clubhouse. So it's a. Uh, I mean, I don't I don't this for a for a, a couple of years now. So. Uh, I know where to park and I know where to go. Got it. All right. Let's talk about your most recent series against your old team, the Miami Marlins. Um, Based on, listen, last time we were here, we talked a lot about the podcast and all that sort of stuff. We don't need to rehash that. But was there a little more fire in your belly going against those guys because of all that or not? Not really. I feel like it's, it's, I mean, last year it was a little bit of, uh, of that feeling, you know? Of like, hey, I'm trying to, I'm trying to do really good against these guys, you know, and I trying to show them like, whatever, like that, that always on a, on a players and a competitive kind of, you know, 
mind when when you play your your ex team. But this time it was more. Uh, I mean, we we just want to win games, you know, and we we gotta continue our our hard hard streak. Is it's a great time to be a Dodger right now, you know, in whatever capacity. You know, if you're a fan, um, you should be really proud of this team. And, I mean, you should really should be really excited to go to the ballpark every single night to watch this team play because it's, a, it's unbelievable. But uh, uh, for me, it's just like another opportunity to, to actually uh, win baseball games. And, I mean, I was starting on Sunday. I want to do something good for the, for the team to win the game. And um, I was having a lot of fun. I was having a lot of fun, not just with my teammates, but with ex-teammates as well um, during that series. So uh, it's, it's crazy how uh, social media and people kind of um, goes crazy when, when something like that happened, not knowing the, the facts behind it. Yeah, well, this is what we're talking about. Your base hit up the middle, and everybody, they even asked on the Dodger broadcast, wow, that looked a little demonstrative, like there was something behind it. So there was nothing behind that. No, just uh, the thing is, like, I, I understand why people people think that way. Even my sister texts me, and he was asking me, are you, are you mad at those guys? What, what, what's going on? Because my, my body language doesn't show that it's, a, that it's a, actually a, something that I was telling uh, Brian De La Cruz that he was, like, on the first step on the dog out. He was, like, Brian De La Cruz and Sandy Alcantara, guys, like, I really... I really keep contact and stay, like stay stay on touch with uh, over there. I miss those guys a lot, and I, I I had really really good times with them over there. And I always mess with uh, De La Cruz, and um, so that that at bat it was a pinch hit at bat, right? And I got a base hit, and De La Cruz had a had a homer early early in the game, but he's like one for four with just that home run. And I was the first thing that I say is like, you see that it's not that hard to hit. You know, like you see how easy it is for me that I, I just come out from the bench and I'm, I'm, I'm cold and I just got a base hit and I'm trying to like tell him. And then after he like he says something back to me and I t- I'm telling De La Cruz, you're you're like really lucky that you're good at baseball because you're getting ugly every single time I see you. And that's why I, I do this, this to my <laughs> face. So I'm, I'm I always call him ugly, um, um, have fun with with De La Cruz. And um, I was telling too that if I pitch again, I was gonna, I was gonna strike him out. Nice, <laughs> isn't? Uh, let me see. Is it muy feo? Is that ugly? Muy yeah, muy feo, muy feo. That's that's exactly what I was saying. See, I got muy one. Feo. Very ugly. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but that's because I've been called that a lot. From, ugly. No my, way. From my can, Spanish speaking friends. No way. You can be called any other thing, but ugly. You're not ugly. It's okay. It's over. When you get over 50, see, you still have a oh, long time. You got another 15 years before you get to the ugly stage. And I don't even know if you'll ever be ugly. You look you look so dang young still. I mean, <laughs> you know, you look Man. like you could pass for 23. I'm going to be I'm going to be a really uh uh young uh, young old man, you know? Like I'm going to try to keep the, you know. <laughs> I don't I don't know how it's going to look. I'm probably going to look like really stupid, but until like someone that I really care about, say something. Uh, I just gotta try to keep the 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 young inside of me alive. No, you're still like you'll be 82. You'll still be kicking your jays. You'll probably be wearing like one of those hats that a lot of older people wear in Florida. Right. You know, with the cool brims. Yeah. You'll still have some payload left. So you'll I still hope be so. good. Yeah, you will. I hope it's, the it's, hair. I hope the hair. I just probably gonna take the earrings out. Uh, no. No more. No. Can you imagine no. me, se- me being 75 in a, in a baseball field with earrings on? That's not a good look. You know? Hell yes, it is. Dude, the uh, old guys who are like 75 and 80 and still have like the little diamond studs in, I'm like, yes. You have <laughs> still got it, dude. Well, I'm going to have to think about that. Let's let's see how I let's see how I look from from mm-hmm. uh from this day to when I'm like I'm 70 on a baseball field with my earrings on. Okay. Uh, I do want to ask you one one last thing about Miami because I think people are curious. Did you talk to Jazz or not? No, not at all. I'm not. Okay. I'm not. Uh, I'm not interested to have that conversation or anything. I, I have no. I have nothing to talk to him. Okay. Not at all. All right. Let's move on. Um, the offense. You get a great look at it every night. Sometimes you are a part of it. Uh, the first five hitters in the lineup are certifiably insane in the sort of numbers they're putting on. I want you to, um, this is from the broadcast against the Marlins. It was either Monday or Tuesday night. This is Shohei's home run. I want you to listen to it 
and then we'll talk about it. Okay, so Joe Davis on the broadcast said it sounded like a shotgun. I think he nailed it because it did. Does it sound different when he squares up a baseball? Yeah, 100%. And the thing is, like, I mean, the whole the whole universe, the whole world is watching Shohei's homer, right? But I'm watching even when he gets out. You know, he hit the ball out front. He hit a line drive to second base, and it's 106 miles per hour. And it sounded like a shotgun, you know? The other day, like, I mean, Mook is terrifying. He's running at first base a lot of the times that Mook is that, that show is hitting, right? He's taking his secondary lead backwards because he's afraid to get hit. <laughs> if I get hit with one of these 100, 111, 118 mile per hour line drive, he's out, you know? So that's a kind of that's a kind of um, greatness that we're watching. Every single day. It's not just the homers. I mean, yeah, the homers are going to make it to the to the highlight reel. But the thing is, like, on an everyday basis, he's hitting balls out of five bats per day. At least three balls are, are over 110 miles per hour. It's crazy. It's unbelievable how he can be, like, the other day he, like, lined out to to left field. And the first thing that we do is, like, look up the of the scoreboard because that ball is 108 miles per hour. And he feels like he just flicked the wrist to the ball. That's how great um, and how like how much better of a of a player and of an athlete this guy is, and it's really fun that we have in our in our team. Do you have a lot of conversations with him? Because I know I heard that he speaks pretty good Spanish, actually. Not I haven't I haven't talked to him in Spanish, but his English is 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 really good. So he's always. Um, He's always talking uh, about the pitcher, about the situation of the game, uh, what kind of pitch he gets. You know, what's the you know, what is he what is he watching from the dugout? Um, like he's you know, like I'm not playing I'm not playing every single day right now, and I'm spending a lot of time by the cage where he sits to watch his at bat, um, and kind of you ask him like I mean what he thinks about you know that pitch or whatever. And sometimes he come back and he say ah, that 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 change was nasty. Or this pitch, um, the fastball was running this way. So against the lefty the other day, last last day I played, he came to the dugout, he strike out in the first at bat, and he came to me and say, "Hey, his fastball is is running." You know, like he he actually give you feedback feedback from from his at bat even when he's not succeeding, and he's is helping you to actually have a better understanding because he's sitting in the top of the lineup. I mean, listen, you've you've seen him from afar. You've competed against him since he came into baseball in 2018. But now that you get to see him on a daily basis, what is it that surprises you most about his ability? Oh, the ability to swing the bat as fast as he is, you know. I remember early in the year, he was having trouble. Like, he, he didn't have a homer, like, for, I mean, I don't know, the first two weeks of the season or something like that. Um, he was, like... 40 or 50 at bats in, in, into his season and he, he don't have, have a homer. I feel like he was like trying to swing faster, you know, because he kind of, you know, he kind of wants to like kind of have a bat speed so he mm-hmm. can hit the ball far. But for like, he's a guy who, who doesn't need extra bat speed. He already has some. So for me, it's the ability to swing the bat like on a, like everybody swing the bat like 80%. His 80% is like 125% of us, you know? So it's, it's crazy how when he turned it down a little bit, he still swing the bat really fast. He still hit it really hard. And he doesn't have to, like, use all his energy. So that's why this guy is able to do both, you know? When he started pitching again, he's going to be able to do both. He's going to be able to pitch and to swing because he doesn't need 100% of his energy every single time that he swing the bat, you know? So he can go 60%. And he still can, can hit balls out opposite field, center field, right field, compared to us, the regular player, who needs like 100%, the perfect, perfect on MLB the show for us to hit a home run the way he hit it, you know? You mean just you regular humans or whatever? Regular Instead human. of whatever planet he's from, because he's not from this one. Yeah, he's definitely the GOAT. He's, I, I already, like, you, uh, Austin, Barnes and, and, uh, Austin Barnes and I, are always in, in awe 
every time he does something like that, and we call him the unicorn, and we call him the goat. He's 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 a goat. I I mean I seen it as I seen enough to to know that this guy is I mean the best that ever do it. He's definitely the most talented. I mean, listen, it's going to take a few more years of putting up whatever numbers he does as both a hitter and a pitcher to be in that conversation, in my opinion. But as far as talent that mm-hmm. we've seen, there's – and I think he's become even a better hitter since he's not pitching this year. I don't know. I could, I'm just saying that as a fan. Well, the numbers, the numbers are showing you, right? It's a, it's, it's a 360 batting average with a like a good sample size of, of – of at bats, you know, mm-hmm. got like 160 at bats already. You know, he's not he's not striking out a ton. He's walking a lot. You know, he's he's finally kind of like feeling comfortable hitting with a lot of runners scoring position. You know, you're gonna you're gonna fail a lot with runners scoring position when you get 80 percent of your at bats are with runners scoring position. You're gonna fail. Mm-hmm. You know, like this is a game of failure. The thing is, like more opportunities you have, more you're gonna fail. You know, it's it's just it's just like that. It's 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 something that uh, I I really uh, I really know that he's if he's healthy, he's gonna be able to help us uh, to win a lot of games like he did the other night. He just he hit two homers. We got four hits that day at, or five hits that day. It was a four by him, one by uh, the Oscar Hernandez. We win the game five to one. You know that's that's how that's how good a player like him or like Mookie or Freddie or the Oscar or Mansi or Will Smith. Like I'm, 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 I mean, I can tell you, I, I can tell you that six guys in our lineup can actually like put the team on their back and get us a W. It is amazing. It is amazing, and I'm so happy for you too because I know that you didn't hit the way you wanted to last year, and the fact that when you do start a couple times a week, the way that you're contributing, I know it. I mean, you're the ultimate team player, but shit, that's gotta feel good, man. Yeah, definitely. It feels good, man. Um, every time, uh, this is being my approach this year because I know I'm not going to play uh, like three days in a row. I'm taking every opportunity to play like it's a playoff game. Because last year, coming back to the playoff, it was really good for me. And uh, it helps me kind of understanding a little bit more what kind of player I can be in a lineup that is trying to compete and win a, a World Series. So every time that I walked to the play in, uh, in the playoff last year, my mentality was like, how can I get on base, right? For the other guys, because I'm hitting nine, you know? So if I get on base for Mookie, Freddy, Will, and all those guys, we have a, a better chance to score and to win the game, right? So I found myself like getting a lot of hits in the playoff last year. Like I'm, I'm, I went like one for... I think I went one for three, two for three, and one for two or something like that in three games in the playoff last year or whatever. And I feel like my approach was really good because I was like, I was stay, I staying within myself, trying to shoot the ball up the middle. And then I started the year that way. And I, I ended up like hitting two homers. I got a couple doubles already. And that's how I kind of keep myself ready for every start, even though I'm playing um every three days every other day or or right now i don't know the next time i'm gonna play because they're they're all right is lined up for these two series so i know i'm gonna be in there at some point because uh, they have a lot of lefties on the bullpen but even though i'm i'm pinch cheating i'm taking that about like i'm pinch cheating the playoff because that's that's kind of prepared me for what's coming and at the at the same time kind of give me the best opportunity to help um, something we haven't talked about a lot because you have been a starter pretty much since this show started. Um, what is your, when you're not in the starting lineup, like I assume you're not in there tonight against Michael King. Um, when do you start mentally and physically getting ready to play the game? And what do you do in the middle of a game to get ready? Yeah. So, uh, I actually do my pre like game routine, the same thing, like I'm playing, you know, um, uh-huh. I'm, I'm getting I'm getting early to the field. I'm doing my uh, defense work, cage work, whatever. And then I work when when we work together as a team. I work at second base because I know that's the position that I'm gonna be in. If I have to come in in uh, uh, defensive replacement or I come in late in games, I'm gonna be playing second more than likely, you know. And then when the game starts, I try to like not get ready like super early like I used to when I when I'm play every single day. I get ready a little later 
and then I'm like I'm kind of ready for the first inning of the game, you know. So that way I can start my routines around the third or the fourth inning, which is going to the cage. I'm trying to get on a on an elliptical or or we have a bike or an elliptical machine uh, by the cage everywhere we go. So I'm trying to get myself like a little bit of uh, a break sweat and then I start hitting. When I start hitting, I'm trying to like think about possibilities that I'm going to be in this game with. Like today, uh, they have Maxui and they have Peralta um, for the back end of the bullpen. Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to kind of prepare myself to face those two guys, you know? Like an opportunity, like, okay, if I face this guy, I'm probably going to get this, this, and that. If I face this, this other guy, I probably get this, this, and that. And this is my approach against them, you know? So um, with that being said, I just go to the cage, trying to stay loose, and then the game will dictate what my opportunity is to be in that game is. You know, like I already know if we're winning by two runs or less, I'm going to be in the game for defense. If a left is coming in the game and we're losing – or we're tied, or we're like having a, a short lead. I'm gonna be in that in that game for those at bats, and it's kind of like thinking along with your manager and what he's been showing you for a month and a half. It's not like many surprises anymore. Got it. Okay, good. Thanks for taking us in there. Uh, you guys just had the Dodger Gala about a week and a half ago or so during an off day. Very nice event. Ed Sheeran played. I always like it because we get to see you guys dressed up and not just in baseball uniforms. Mm-hmm. You, of course, look sensational. I know your family wasn't out here because Aaron's finishing school and everything. Uh, are you wearing Jordans in this photo? Yeah, <laughs> of course. That's all I wear. Yeah, I have, yeah. I, have a, I have a really good pair for, for that one. It's, uh, it calls the Trophy Rooms uh, Ones, Lowe's. Um, so it's a, a Chicago kind of inspired uh uh, shoe uh red red black and white i think uh with like i mean with this suit like uh, just a plain t-shirt um the accessories or whatever like sunglasses my chains or whatever and then i want my shoes to be the kind of the center of, of attention so that's why the shoe is kind of red black and have a little bit of a uh, um gold in there so um that's that's what i went with and i think it looked good no, you look, you look great. You always have to dress from the shoes up. It starts with the shoes, right? Every people, I was, I always thought for the longest time, like that was the dessert, like that was the finishing touch of the clothing meal, if you will. But everybody who knows how to dress is like, no, no, no. You start with the shoes and you work your way up. Yeah, you look, you 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 find the shoe and then you pair it up with anything that you're gonna wear. You know. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Um. All right. So let's go. Will Smith. Uh, he looks very nice. Very. Basic, like that's what I expect Will Smith to look like. Yeah, like our manager call him uh, vanilla. Call him vanilla. vanilla ice cream. Everybody likes it, you know. But it's uh, simple, you know. It's not. It's not flashy. It's not fancy. But he's, you know, he's likable. Yeah, I like it. Jay Jay Hay. I would have been more surprised had he worn a shirt under his coat than had he not. I mean, last year he did, and everybody say, why? Why are you wearing a a, a, a t shirt? Or a or a or a shirt under, you gotta you gotta show you gotta show your uh, your tats and I think it's a good look. Okay, now Shohei, the man just signed a seven hundred million dollar deal. I know that six hundred eighty million of it is deferred, but I think that he's making some money off the off the field this year. Can we find a tailor to take his suit in? Like it looks like he bought this at the oversized rack. <laughs> you say you think you think he, he bought it he bought it like the day before I, I i'm pretty sure they sent it to him because he got a boss deal and you know like the kind of the kind of stuff that they do for him i think i think it's show it's not it's not show his fault it's boss fault i gotta put it on boss because if this guy have a deal with them they need to know all the all the sizes right hell yeah i mean then, Send him a sending Taylor already. Exactly. Like, we know that the, this this Dodger event didn't pop up out of nowhere. We knew we were going to go to this for a few weeks. So, hey, Shohei, we want to send a Taylor to Dodger Stadium to go fit you one day. I mean, his wife looks lovely. She looks great. Everything fits. And he looks like he's been put in the dryer because his suit is too big. <laughs> he looks, uh, yeah, I don't know. Like, this is, this is my first time. I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. For uh for for next year. 
So let's let's see let's see when uh, when he comes next year to the gala. I think it's gonna be so much better. Okay. All right. Let's see who else we've got. Uh, oh, Freddie Freeman. Uh, his wife looks lovely. Looks great. And Freddie. You know, nice Freddie. T- What'd you say? It's a nice couple right there. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. And look at those teeth, man. Those are yeah. now. Here's our guy. Here's our guy, Glass our guy. and his girl. This yeah, is this is it. This yeah. is this is the guy right now. You know, like Tyler Glass. No, I mean, who wouldn't want to look like that? You know, wow. I'm, right. It's the best like model esque. It's yeah. like model esque. You know, six foot eight Adonis, freakazoid, funny guy. Yeah, it's good. Okay, good for him. Right. Really good. Yeah. Okay. Yamamoto, uh, good. I, he always wears a vest. I like that about him. Yeah. Um, it looks like I'm not 100 percent sure. It might be the same suit that he wore to his opening day press conference when he signed with the Dodgers. It might. It yeah. might be. It might be. It yeah. Looks similar. I mean, kind of yeah. same colors. Uh, I mean, I mean, he looks good. You know, like I guess. Uh, I guess. I. This is another guy that I gotta give the benefit of the doubt. Because they probably didn't know what what to uh, what to expect and what they're gonna see, and you know, like if you see a guy like Kike, he's been here for a long time, you know. I I know he's gonna be here next, but look at this, you know, like this is a guy who's prepared, who's ready, who knows the you know what he's gonna be against. You know, that's why he got the all pink, even though they they told us hey, wear your best blue, white, or or gray. Kike, obviously, he goes with pink because it's Kike, you know, and everybody loves it. And the only thing that I will say, Kike, you need to wear sunglasses and get a pair of sunglasses for your wife too next time because, I mean, we can see, we can even see your eyes. So, sunglasses for the next time. This is my only tip to this uh, um, amazing couple. Um, Kike and Mariana, sunglasses next time. I think you guys got to be killing it. Okay, uh, I guess that'll do it. For um, was there somebody we didn't show who uh, <sighs> who really that I wore, oh well? uh, Bobby Miller wore the like pinstripes. Oh. yeah, white 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 ish kind of a suit with like pinstripes, sunglasses. Bobby's one of my favorites. Uh, um, kind of dressers of the team, you know. Yeah, yeah, pretty yeah, pretty big cool. style, you know. He's kind of you know like we miss him. He's down right now, but uh. Um, Bobby was, uh, looking good. He's always like dressed to the occasions. I remember like last year when he made his debut, um, he got a, like people like following on with the cameras or whatever. He mm-hmm. always bring the, the good, uh, the good outfits to the start days. So I like that. I like to, uh, I like to see that. So today's Friday and you know, like when we roll to the ballpark, we're probably going to have cameras because it's a, like a Friday night game or whatever. And so you dress a little bit, uh, a, a little bit for for those occasions. So when you already know that, you put a you put a good uh, good outfit on, and I think a lot of guys will will do that for for today's game. Well, you know, at home, it's obviously so different than when you played in Miami, where the crowds were not abundant. Mm-hmm. That's being nice. Dodger Stadium, you guys get great crowds, but then when you go on the road. And you go to places like San Diego where they cannot stand the city of L.A. A lot of Dodger fans make the trip, but still, it'll be a packed house. Then you go up to San Francisco where they cannot stand you. Mm-hmm. That stuff is fun, though, isn't it? When you're hated? Yeah, it's fun. And and you start getting used to it and you start having fun with it. You know, like at the beginning, you feel like it's a, it's a little bit of, a, um, I don't know, more than excitement. It was uh, pressure and kind of, you know, like you, you you're saying, oh, these guys didn't really like us or whatever. Now you have fun with it and you embrace the opportunity to play in front of a lot of people. And these kind of rivalry, rivalries uh, that we have right now with these two teams are are good for baseball, good for us. And uh, make us make us be in our toes, you know, because uh, everybody's going to bring it. We know who we are. We know um, what we're against this year. And uh, we know the expectations. And the expectations for us are kind of like continue to play our game to play hard, but I kind of, you know, like I confront this, uh, this series, like this one, the Braves couple, uh, couple series ago, um, San Francisco is always, it's always hard to play against those guys. Um, it's pretty fun to, to have a lot of people at the ballpark for sure. 
Yeah. All right. I got two other things. Then I'm going to let you go drink your Cuban coffee, enjoy San Diego, and go get ready to hang out with Mookie during your uh, half hour drills on the field. Um, number one is uh, what was I going to ask you about? Let me think here. Hold on. Uh, no, I didn't want to go there. Um, <laughs> now I wanted to ask you about uh, Gavin Lux changing his walk up song. Yeah. Did you even pay attention to the Kendrick Lamar Drake's diss track? Yeah. No. The the thing is, uh, I I actually I actually like the music, but I don't know what the the story behind. You know, the thing about the thing about like Drake and Kendrick Lamar. The other day, I was like, I was like, why did he change his song? You know, and and they kind of explained me kind of the 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 go back the back and forward that they have. But uh, I just enjoy uh, listening to the to the vocal songs for sure. So you're not following the whole back and forth between Drake and Kendrick Lamar? Not just no, things. no. I've been I've been off. I've been off of that. Um, I've been uh, I've been listening more to uh, to my artist music and kind of you know sp- Spanish music and Latin reggaeton or whatever. But I haven't been uh, following the whole the whole thing. Okay, and I know that you're a Laker guy. They got eliminated in the first round by the yeah. Denver Nuggets. Have you been following the NBA playoffs? I, a little bit, yeah, because, uh, I mean, we always have a play in, uh, um, in the stadium. I really like the Denver team, but uh, it's really hard to see what the Lakers did, you know, there. Uh, they uh, they have the lead for so much time, you know, mm-hmm. throughout the whole series. And the Denver Nuggets, you had the lead for, like, I don't know, like I saw the stats, like 40 minutes, the whole the first three games. And they won all, all of them, you know, or or they won two or three or something like that. Um, it's crazy, but uh, I mean that's how you know basketball works. Sometimes, kind of, I feel like it's the same thing in football. Um, sometimes teams get the lead, and then all of a sudden they they take the the foot out of the gas pedal and they stop like like playing like it's a one nothing game. And mm-hmm. I mean they I mean they they got eliminated right there. Okay, the team Denver. Uh, is LeBron, just give me a yes or no. Is LeBron back with the Lakers next year? I would say no. No, no. Where do you think he's going? Uh, yeah, he's going somewhere else, um, to, uh, to go be part of us, like a super team. Wow. I don't know where that's going to be because I don't know like where he lined up, but, uh, I think he's out. Okay. Do you think Jimmy Butler is back in Miami? I think Jimmy, Jimmy Butler is going to stay there. He likes co- he likes coffee way too much. He likes Cuban coffee, and he uh, he. I mean, Miami is a really nice place to 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 be when you play. Can you can you get good Cuban coffee in San Diego? Not here. Uh, I I think here I will go for a for a macchiato or a cortado. So I will never I will never trust to go Cuban coffee so anywhere else than Florida. You, yeah. Well. So when I, when I go to different places, I go to like local spots. And I ask for the espresso with a little bit of foam meal. That's what I do. It's like a little cortado. Do you have to get the little cute design on top or no? Uh, when I when I order like for a latte or a cappuccino or something like that, they do like a design. But now that I'm making my own coffee at home and, you know, like I'm trying to make my own Cuban coffee with a little bit of foam, I got a machine that, uh, that I'm trying to learn how to do it. I'm be, I've been watching on on YouTube this uh this kind of videos of how to do it and I'm trying. Wow, you you want to become like a a barista? A barista. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I'm gonna be my own barista, anyways. You know. How great would that be if on an off day we shot you as working as a barista somewhere in Los Angeles? That would be great. How about how about if we put it out there? I like I like coffee shops. You know, like right now I'm telling you, any coffee shop that are watching this. That wants me to come to the to come to the shop for like a couple hours in the morning. I will make coffee with you guys so I can finally learn how to create the designs on top of the on top of the lattes. So here is here's an offer for any coffee shop in LA that wants to get me in in the morning for a couple hours and I will serve coffee with you guys. On notice, coffee shops. On no, but you cannot wear nice shoes there. You're gonna spill stuff all over them. You can't. No, I don't care. It's it's just shoes, you know. Like, oh, don't. 
Bite your tongue, Miggy Rose. It's, just it's, shoes. It's just shoes. You we can we can clean it. You know that's why. Can you imagine if I think the shoes are like so uh, uh, something like really really oh I can wear it? I I will never wear the shoes that I wear on the field. You know, Mookie Betts the other day gave me a pair of uh, Jordans for Jackie Robinson Day. That those things are to put him on the on a gallery. You know, they're they're so nice. It's uh for number forty two on it. They're like white, uh, light blue, and and yellow, like the UCLA. I think it's UCLA colors, right? Or mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, the universe, the, the the college that he went to. Um, and amazing shoes, you know. And I'm wearing on the field, you know, making it like so dirty with clay and dirt and rain and mud and everything. So it's just shoes. I, I wear the shoes so wherever I go. And if they get dirty, I clean them and I keep wearing it. The great shoe philosopher, Miguel Rojas. It's always great yeah. catching up with you, my friend. Hopefully the next time we talk, your family will be uh, joining you uh, yeah. at some point, I imagine, in June. and. Hopefully, uh, yeah, in June, early June, they, they will be with me. So I'm, I'm missing my kids a lot, missing the yeah, whole family, know. you know. And uh, that's the only hard part about being so far away from them and being on the West Coast. But, uh, I mean, what a great time to be a Dodger, man. Amazing. It ain't bad. You guys are playing some great baseball. Keep it up. Keep up the great work. Tell everybody in that clubhouse we say hello, and we'll catch up in a few weeks. All right, my friend? All right, my brother. Thank you very much. Awesome. See you. Awesome. Uh, great job, as always, by our amazing producer, the one and only Robbie Shirocco. And for Miggy Rowe, who says, go wear your best shoes no matter where. Even if they're near a horse stable, they can always get clean. <laughs> I am Chris Rose. We will see you next time here on the Chris Rose Rotation, a production of John Boy Media.